Hello everyone, welcome to my tying bench. I'm Phil Rowley. Join me as I show you some of my favorite flies and the tricks and techniques I use to tie them. Hopefully you'll be inspired to add these patterns to your fly box or perhaps use the tricks and techniques I show to add to your patterns as well. Today we're going to be tying the balanced minnow in white satin. An all white balanced minnow that is a good all around color whenever you're encountering trout or other game fish feeding on bait fish. Join me and I'll show you how to tie it. It's hard to go wrong tying any bait fish pattern in basic white. My white satin balanced minnow was designed with this color scheme in mind. Here are the materials you will need to tie your own school of white satin balanced minnows. All right, so we're going to tie a balanced minnow. And this fly has already appeared on my channel in the fathead minnow configuration, kind of an olive coloration. Uh, this is the all white version, I call white satin. And uh, into the jaws of the vise, I've got the Daiichi Jake Hook, a 4640 number 10. And now these 4640s are available in 10s, 8s, and 6s. So we can try some bigger minnows, but this uh, imitates a small little white minnow. White is always a good starting point. So we're going to cover the uh, hook shank with tying thread, white minnow, white fly, white thread. Get that started. Cover that shank and come back up because we're going to tie in the chassis. This is balanced. So to balance a fly, we have to have add an extension in the form of a pin, or in this case a sequin pin, with a 1/8 inch silver tungsten bead. The beads have to be tungsten so the fly will balance or tip horizontal. And it doesn't have to tip perfectly because most times we're going to fish this fly under an indicator. Although balanced flies, I can't stress this enough are an excellent cast and retrieve pattern because you're essentially making a little jig. So we're going to tie this in like so and I tie this little sequin pin and I get these sequin pins at Michaels in either gold or silver. You can also get them online as well places like Amazon sequin S-E-Q-U-I-N and if you can envision I could get two more beads on there now if I was building these mass production style tying a number of these I would whip finish at this point and glue this chassis using some brushable super glue, which I'll do now. Set them aside to dry for a little bit, and then the rest of this fly is just tying. So we've got the chassis in place. So it's got a, a thin white tail, and I'm using an entire plume of marabou, and I'm looking for a plume that's very thin, thin-stemmed. I'm actually going to strip some of this back to reduce the bulk on the marabou plume itself, because I'm just going to sweep the fibers all together. I've moistened them a bit to form a little shank length long tail or at least a tail that's as long as the head of the pin to the bend of the hook approximately. You want to keep the tail light and not too long because of course you're adding weight and uh, if you overdo the tail, overdress it, make it too long, it adds weight and could potentially put the fly out of balance. So we're just going to bind that down this fly is not complicated. We've got that all tied in and I've tied that in right at the base of the pin here, the point back, and it just evens out our shank along here so it makes our body nice and even. So for the body, we're just going to use some Arizona Semi Seal in color number seven, Crystal. Um, so we're going to form a dubbing loop. So I'm going to pull down four inches or so of tying thread straight back up wrap that thread, the bobbin around the shank a few times and just work the thread back to the base of the tail and that's going to close up the dubbing loop nice and tight. Then we're just going to carry the tying thread forward up past the eye up to the rear of the bead. We're going to take a uh, dubbing spinner, whatever kind you use. This is a uh, kind of a crochet hook style with a weighted end going to put that in there and let it hang. I'm going to take our 
body material. Pull out, and you see it's kind of just stuffed in there, so I'm just going to pull it apart a little bit to re-mix it. Even up the fibers a little bit, and then I'm just going to take a pinch, open the dubbing loop at the bottom, insert it between the thread strands, and push it up into position. And if you've watched any of my other videos where I use dub loops with semi seal and materials like that, this is sort of my standard dubbing technique is insert the dubbing at the bottom, push it into position, and try to make the dubbing as even as you can. So you don't want a big thick clump and a skinny clump and a thick clump. So you can take a pinch off and I kind of massage it between my thumb and forefinger before sticking it in and then I can spread it out like that all the way up. And I'm just going to load this loop from one end to the other before spinning it tight. So I'll just carry on and do that. Then I'm going to start spinning slowly. Starts to take the twist and what you can do is I'm actually just going to hold the dubbing loop up like this and just below off camera I give that dubbing whirl a spin below my finger and then that'll transfer all the way up when I remove my finger. So I've got that spun up and when the fibers radiate out about 90 degrees that should be good. And the mohair in here can wrap around the thread so I'm just going to use Let's pull the vise all over the table here. Just gently pick at it with my dubbing brush just to free up some of those fibers so we don't want to mat them down. So obviously you want to pick at it almost to get it down to the thread core of the loop but not break the dubbing loop. So that looks good. And then we're just going to take our dubbing noodle now that we've formed and just start winding it around so I get a full turn and then I can come in pull on it quite firm and just sweep those dubbing fibers back out of the way with each turn just like so all the way up we're going to give this fly another aggressive brush anyway but the goal here is not to, to minimize the number of fibers we trap down so I'm kind of always preening and stroking the fibers to keep make sure they're free, get up to that hook eye, go right past it and a lot of times I'll just tuck it back on an angle like this just to make sure I've got the dubbing right back in against the return of the hook eye there, the shank that forms leads up to the hook eye. And we're just going to brush that back right up along the pin and you can go up to the rear of the bead and then tie that off once, twice, and then in front. Put a few more wraps. And at this point, I'm just going to come in and aggressively brush just to add some translucency to suggest a translucent shiny minnow body. brush that up like that. Stroke all that back. Back out of the way. Mat all this down because we're actually going to tie back on this dubbing a little bit. So we can put a little lateral flash if we want on there. So I'm just going to put a single strand of this uh, crinkle mirror flash and pearl down the sides. Uh, you could use flat regular pearl flashaboo, silver, Anything to suggest a lateral line. So I'm just going to take a strand here, lay it on the barrel of the bobbin, hold it in place with my forefinger, roughly equal amounts on either side, pull this in and just secure it down the side of the fly trim. And then I'm going to go forward again and repeat this process with another strand. So again, double it around. And this allows you to really aim where you want to put those strands. So you always want to tie it in forward. I'm going to do that one a bit because it didn't go right around. I want it down the sides. So by tying it in right at the bead and securing it back, 
That'll help it tuck along the sides of the fly. Of course, when it gets wet, it'll all blend in like so. Now, minnows often have variegations, little par markings or what have you. And for many years, we used to use teal or mallard, but those are stiff fibered, stiff stemmed feathers that can be a little unruly and not fun to work with. But started using this uh, barred schlappen that you get from MFC. It comes in a variety of colors, olives, purples, blacks, browns. This white complements the uh, white color, just give it some subtle markings. If you, what you're trying to look for is a stem that's relatively thin uh, stem, so it's a little more easy to to, uh, to wind, so I'm just, I want to take advantage of these fuzzy feathers at the base. So I'm just going to trim out a section, and I'll actually rake my thumbnail on it like that, and that'll help loosen and uh, make the stem a little more, more malleable. We're going to come in like so. Good wrap down. And then we're just going to take this feather and kind of sweep those fibers back like so. I'm just going to put, whoops, don't let go of it. Try that again. Up. There's one, two, three. Just come up, one wrap, two wraps, and I'm just going to fold everything back, including, I haven't trimmed the feather off yet. I'm just going to sweep everything back, a few more wraps in there, lock everything down, and then I can come in and just trim the excess off. Give this a good pinch, and this will all blend and flow, and gives this fly you know, a nice mottled minnow look. You know, it's going to shine from within. The lateral lines are in there. I like to keep them tucked inside that. That helps tuck them and train them along. I'll show you a different head option. You could always affix a pair of eyes on here and then encapsulate the head with UV resin. And I do that as well. But another alternative that's arguably a little quicker is just to use a fish mask. And these number four fish masks um, are the right size for this. If you look at them, there's, you can see there's a bit of a more notched end, so you want to put that notched end on this way. So we're just going to push this over top. So we need to affix this on here. And to do that, we're going to use some of this medium viscosity Solares resin. So I'm just going to put a healthy dollop, give that a squeeze, rotate that around. I want to make sure it's on there good. It looks a little syrupy and ugly right now and then again finding that little notch down push that over just trying to not get any on me hold that in place like so and then come up and the UV light will reach through and cure I'm just going to rotate this around this is alternating pulse. Make sure it really cures it up. And I'm just slowly rotating around. That should, that should be on there. And it is. It's not coming off. And of course with that little notch we still left the hook eye exposed so we can tie this on. Now of course we've got to add some eyeballs. So, I don't know if you noticed when I put this up originally, but right here it tells you the hook sizes to use with, which isn't really material for this, it's just pick a size of fish mask that's going to fit over the bead, but the four millimeter eyes. So these are the lots of different color options, I like the color of these fire eyes in four um, millimeter. Right here. So I'm just going to take my dubbing needle and pick an eye, get that on the dubbing needle, rotate this on the side, and there is a little depression in there designed to take that eyeball. So you just sort of make sure it sits flat in there, like so, and then we'll repeat that process for the 
far side eye. Of course, you can put any color eyeball you want in there. Of course, they're just sitting there right now, so we've got to lock them in place too. So I'm turning this eye horizontal, and now I'm going to use some of the Solaris Bone Dry and just drop it in like so. Make sure you've totally encapsulated that eye in the bone dry. It also adds to the depth and look of the eye and then you're just going to cure it. And that'll lock that in place and then we're just going to roll this around and repeat that process on the far eye. Again, we just want to make sure we've totally encapsulated that eye. And then just give it a cure. And that'll lock that in there. Nice, so there we go. We've got a finished balanced minnow in white satin. And of course if you wanted to tie these in other color schemes uh, you certainly can. The slapping comes in other colors. You could take a marker and darken the head to match the overall body color that you're trying for. But there you go. Balanced minnow, white satin. Stash a few in the bait fish section of your fly box.